Hi, my name is Burke Holland and welcome to today's video on working with the Kindo UI data source. In this video, we're going to go over how to create a simple data source, how to bind a Kindo UI widget to the data source, and then we'll leverage some advanced data source features like models and synchronization. We're going to create a simple project here for updating a list of Japanese weapons. On the left side, we'll have a create form. In the middle, we'll have a data grid. And on the right hand side, we'll have an edit form. I'm using a Kindo UI splitter here to lay out the screen. For more information on the Kindo UI splitter, make sure you visit the online demos. Uh, now I have a simple Rails project set up already where I've already added the Kindo UI JavaScript files as well as jQuery and the Kindo UI CSS files. I am using Rails here so I have these tags at the top which will automatically include all of my CSS and JavaScript files. Kindo UI is of course a client-side framework so it doesn't care what you use on the server side. You can use PHP or Rails or MVC. It absolutely doesn't care. To get started with, let's go ahead and create a data source. We'll have a data source variable and assign that to a new instance of the Kindo data source. Inside the data source, we're just going to specify the transport. The transport tells the data source how to handle operations like create, read, update, and delete. For now, we'll just specify the read and tell it to read the weapons endpoint. That's all we have to do to create the data source. Now let's go ahead and create a grid to bind to the data source. In the middle section of the splitter, I'm going to create a grid. For more information on the grid, be sure to check out the online demos. Uh, additionally, we have a getting started with the Kindo UI grid that I would highly recommend. I've added a table there, and I'm going to turn that table into a grid by selecting it with a jQuery selector and calling the Kindo grid function. Inside the Kindo grid function, we're going to specify the data source property of the grid and set that equal to the data source variable that we just created. That is all that we have to do. Let's go on over to our app and see what it looks like. All right, so now we have a data grid with our Japanese weapons in the middle here. Now, what I want to do is alter this just a little bit. Currently, our data source is bound directly to the data, and I want to introduce the concept of models here. Now, we can create a model object and define that model object by specifying a variable, in this case, weapon, and setting that equal to the Kindo model and telling it to define a new model. Now in that model I'm just going to specify an ID property and say that that is bound to the ID property on the JSON response. Now what's going to happen here is the data source is going to read in the JSON and then we're going to specify in the schema that the model for the data source is this weapon object above that we've created. Now, it's going to take the other properties on the response from the JSON and automatically push those onto the model as well, things like the name and the description. So let's save this and see what we look like now. All right, so no change. Good, except for now the grid is bound to the model data instead of directly to the data source. Let's go ahead and add a create form. I'm going to scroll up to the top here and create form. I'm just going to add a simple list. I've created some code snippets so you don't have to watch me type as much. This is just a simple list with a name input, a description text area, and a create button with create weapon ID. Now down in the JavaScript, I want to go ahead and add an event to the create weapon button. And we're going to do a couple different things in this event here. The first one is we're going to push a new model object onto the data source simply by sending in the name and the description properties. Then we're going to tell the data source to sync, which will send the changes to the server. I'm going to go ahead and clear out the two text boxes in the form, and then we'll have the data source read, which will refresh the data in the grid. Now the only other thing we need to do here is up in the transport, we need to define what to do for a create operation. In this case, we need to tell it that the URL for the create is weapons.create, weapons create JSON. And the method, Rails is going to expect this to come in as a post, and so we can specify that just by setting the type. All right, so let's save this and go back over to the application. Refresh. Okay, we have a create form, and we'll go ahead and add, uh, I don't know much about Japanese weapons, so I'll add a gun, and we'll make it a really big gun. And we'll go ahead and say create. 
and we have a gun it's been added to our grid automatically notice we didn't do any extra plumbing wire up to to have the grid change it changed automatically and if I do a page refresh you can see that that data was persisted back to the server let's go ahead and add an edit form now to create an edit form I'm just going to add in a simple snippet of HTML here on the right hand side and this looks very similar to the create form as a text field for name, text area for in for description, and an update and a delete button. Additionally, while I'm here in the grid, I'm just going to tell the grid that it is selectable, which will allow us to select rows in the grid. Now, if we reload and we look at this, we have an edit form and we can select items in the grid. We do need to get the selected item into our form on the right. The way that we do that is we're going to listen to the change event on the grid. There's a couple of different things going on here and I'll explain each of these. The first one is I'm going to be getting the ID of the currently selected item by asking for the ID property off the data object. I'm then going to get the corresponding model object off the data source and I'm going to store that in this selected weapon variable which I haven't defined yet. I'm then going to get the change name and change description values and I'm going to set them to the model object property name and model object property description. I'm going to go ahead and define this variable for selected weapon and that should be all we have to do and we should be able to now select items in our grid and have the edit form be populated. Okay so now we're selecting items and on the right hand side you can see that it is updating with each item that we select. All right, let's add update and delete actions. All right, to add update and delete actions, we're just going to bind to the click events on the update and delete buttons. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the name from the change name text box and the description from the change description, and we're gonna set the selected weapon model object properties name and description. Then we'll call the data source.sync. Additionally, for the delete method, we're going to remove the selected weapon from the model and then we're going to call the data source.sync. Now, Rails is going to expect my URLs to be different for update and delete. So here in the change, each time the selection changes, I'm going to dynamically update the dis destroy and update URLs. And up in the data source, Rails is going to expect any updates to be sent as a type of put and it's going to expect deletes to be sent as a type of delete. And we use the destroy property on the transport because delete is a keyword in JavaScript. All right, let's save this and see what our application looks like now. So now I should be able to select an item, update it, and click the update button. All right, so you see that the data grid updated automatically. We can refresh this and see that the changes are persisted. Similarly, I can click the delete button and the item is removed from the grid. Refresh and the changes are persisted. All of that is being taken care of for us by the data source. This has been a really high level overview of the Kindle UI data source. We covered how to create a data source how to uh, use models with the data source, how to use synchronization with the data source. Uh, the data source is an extremely powerful piece of the Kindle UI framework upon which to build full featured applications. Um, it even supports building dynamic views using Kindle UI templates. Um, for more information about the other Kindle UI widgets, please visit the online learning demos and the uh, other screencasts that we have available for Kindle UI. Thanks and have a lot of fun developing with Kindle UI.